We have one, maybe two solar storms that are on their way to Earth, and a new region that's rotating into Earth view has already said hello with flare. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week really picks up. We've had a lot of activity near Central Disk. It started with an emerging region that fired a flare, and then that triggered two filament eruptions. You can see the first filament eruption in the Earth strike zone, bam, right there. That's headed off to Earth. And then the second one, bam, right there. Now, the second one may have only partially erupted, and if so, we've got a kind of a one-two punch. They're both headed off towards Earth, and we think the impact will be right around July. July 9th. But that's not the only story. We have a returning region that's coming from the sun's backside, and it's not even fully in view yet, and it's already fired off a C-class flare, which is brightening our day. So all of us amateur radio operators and emergency responders, we can look forward to some boosted solar flux that's going to enhance our radio propagation easily over the next couple weeks, and we'll be watching this region very closely to see if it's going to grow into an M-flare player. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see since about the last week in June, that's when the X-ray flux started to die down. This is because region 2715 was rotating off of the sun's west limb and onto the backside. Now with that X-ray flux dropping, the solar flux also drops. So since about the 26th, we've been dealing with really poor uh, radio propagation on the amateur radio bands, and it's continued that way easily through the beginning of this month. And only since about the 5th do we see that, that X-ray flux begin to rise again. That's because of this new region that's not even in Earth view yet. You can see that big C-class flare that it popped right there. That actually is an eruptive flare, so this region may actually be a solar storm producer. That's one of the reasons why we're so excited about this region. As it rotates into view, we're going to be keeping our eyes on it. But the nice thing is that that solar flux is rising right along with the X-ray flux. So as amateur radio operators and emergency responders, we are going to be enjoying some decent propagation. We're going to be back into the marginal conditions, and that should last possibly for the next two weeks. Switching to your solar storm conditions, despite having a spotless sun for nearly the past two weeks, we've actually seen a bit of activity. Back on the 26th, we bumped up the storm levels for a short while, and some aurora photographers got some decent shots before things began to settle down. Now, since then, we've seen unsettled conditions and quiet conditions kind of bumping around. But then on the 5th, we actually got hit again by a stealthy solar storm that popped us up to storm levels for a very short while before fading back down. And now, we're at unsettled conditions, but this isn't going to last because we have those two solar storms that are en route that should hit us on the 9th-ish, and that could easily bump us back up to active conditions, possibly even storm conditions. And although the solar storms as of late have not been all that long-lasting or all that strong, some dedicated aurora photographers have managed to capture some beautiful shots, like this in New Zealand, and even fighting the midnight sun in Canada, some people got some gorgeous shots in Manitoba and in central Alberta. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can tell immediately is that the backside of the sun is a lot more active than the front side right now. That huge bright region in the middle of the sun, that's the region that's just about to rotate into Earth view. And it is, as you can see, it's changing a lot. It's firing off flares, which usually means it's pretty unstable. So we're going to be very interested watching it as it rotates into Earth view to see whether or not it could grow into an M-flare player. But even still, it is what's going to be boosting the solar flux for us for the next couple weeks. And so us amateur radio operators and emergency responders should enjoy some marginal radio propagation easily over the next 10 days, maybe two weeks. And then after that, you can see there's another bright region. That's going to be following the first one and maybe even a third bright region. So it looks like we're going to have some decent solar flux easily over the next maybe three weeks.
Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from those one-two punch from those two Earth-directed solar storms, but remember these are expected to be pretty weak. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with a decent chance of a, sol of a minor storm, but at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled to active conditions with a much smaller chance for a minor storm, and this should last from the 9th into the 10th and then probably dying down easily by the 11th before things kind of go back down to quiet conditions once again. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week. Everything, of course, is still in the green when it comes to solar flares, but we do have that new region that is rotating into Earth view off of the sun's east limb. The nice thing is that it's boosted the solar flux back up into the marginal levels for radio propagation. So as amateur radio operators and emergency responders, we should really enjoy this. Now, the other nice thing is that we actually have a couple more regions that are going to be rotating into view shortly thereafter, so we could enjoy this propagation boost easily over the next two, dare I say it, three weeks. It'd be fantastic. So the space weather this week is really exciting. We have two solar storms that are en route to Earth. They could hit us around July 9th and 10th, and it could bring aurora views down to high latitudes. So your aurora photographers, especially in the south, you could be in for some good viewing. Now your aurora photographers in the north, you're dealing with the midnight sun right now, so that could make aurora viewing a bit tough for you. Now on top of that, we have a returning region that's rotating into Earth view off of the sun's east limb, and that may make you GPS users a bit nervous, but this region isn't really firing any strong flares, so your, sh your GPS reception should be okay, but just remember around the dawn dust terminators, it could get a little bit glitchy. Now, that same region is actually really good news for us amateur radio operators and emergency responders as it's boosting the solar flux up into marginal levels and with a few other regions that are going to be rotating in to Earth view right on its heels, this could boost the solar flux for us easily over the next two to three weeks possibly. So, enjoy. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.